All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so um, this is my second video of today, and I, I feel compelled to talk about this subject because I see uh, this poor lady here. Uh, she's talking about UFO aliens, and so I clicked on that video, and she's she's all into this you know idea that there are little green men flying up in heaven and uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that I mean I just want to bring some clarity today and there's this another video by Philip right here the whistleblower alright so do I got that one open yet no okay all right, so let's listen to this one. I learned at that moment the same that they don't do anything to us. When you testified to, to Congress, but also in front of the Disclosure Project during Stephen Greer's Disclosure Project, you claimed that the, the station actually operates as a sort of an air traffic control station for for UFOs. And, com, and, that, and that these... Here, I, I apologize for this. I got to go back. That moment, the system's still energized, huh. and that absolutely—I le learned at that moment the system's still energized, huh. and that absolutely set off red flags to me because I knew they were lying about that system, and that certainly would have to be a good reason for them to be being deceptive. Um, and I would just want to point out something that you said before, um, just to get for clarification: there is no security at the facility. Its location is its security. Nobody's going to the South Pole. You don't need security. They literally, it's a logistical impossibility for anybody to get there and do anything to us. When you testified to Congress, but also in front of the Disclosure Project during Stephen Greer's Disclosure Project, you claimed that the, the station actually operates as a sort of an air traffic control station for for UFOs. And, com and, that, and that these... This station has communicated with, quote, exotic craft by sending neutrinos up into space. I know that's a big sentence that I just uh, spat out there. Can you explain for, for me and the rest of us what exactly that means? Absolutely. Uh, well, first and foremost, I did not ever say that. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know if he said that or not, but if you notice here in the first part, he doesn't say that. This whole thing with sending neutrinos up and you know whatever you know, I, you know I'm communicating with UFOs he, he never says that I, I don't know if he does say that but he doesn't say it here in the beginning of this video so the impression that I'm getting is that people want desperately to believe in creatures in outer space desperately want to believe that people desperately want to believe in Superman Batman Robin Spider-Man Aquaman the flash people desperately want to believe in little green men from Mars and the reality is they do not exist all right and this is pure wickedness pure evil and th this idea of UFO aliens pure evil 100% imaginary alright so we see even got questions ministry is gonna support this idea and before we get to that let's let's look at this trailer and it's only a minute, so bear with me. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. In Genesis 6 and, and everywhere else, these are angelic beings. Because it's in the Old Testament, and one of my beefs is Christians don't know their Bibles. To Christians don't know their Bibles. Well, you know what? He's right. 
he's right. But not in the way he thinks he's right. Their exhibits, the Old Testament. It's a controversial topic to say the least. There's, there's a lot of different theories. I believe that the sons of God were the line of Seth. This is a myth. This never happened, Larry. This is not a historical reporting. According to Jesus, angels are not made to mate. The sons of God inches there has always remained a mystery to me. God put them in the slammer and they ain't getting out. You know, you can call them angels, you can call them demons. They weren't really angels, they weren't really human, they but they are immortal. Their spirits don't die. This is Sons of God. Fallen <laughs> angels explore. Yeah, yeah. Just it's one hundred percent imaginary. It's not true at all. There's no truth to it whatsoever. It's not supported by the Bible at all. Now let's go to got questions. And, you know, I, I got some slack for this, but what these guys teach, they're very popular. All right. But what these guys teach over and over again is false. Let's listen to what they say. Who were the sons of God and daughters of men in Genesis 6, 1 through 4? We're going to answer that question. Genesis 6, 1 through 4 refers to the sons of God and the daughters of men. There have been several suggestions as to who the sons of God were and why the children they had with the daughters of men grew into a race of giants. That is what the word Nephilim seems to indicate. All right, just, just so this is clear, that word is not in the Bible. Now, think about this. If you're saying that that word is in the Bible, then you're saying my Bible is wrong and that I can't trust my Bible. My Bible does not have that word. And so when you say that this word is in the Bible and it's not in my Bible, we got a problem. Now, I take a exception to that. And I t I'm very serious about that. The three primary views on the identity of the sons of God are A. They were fallen angels B. They were powerful human rulers Or C. They were godly descendants of Seth intermarrying with wicked descendants of Cain Alright, so I got a problem with all three of these all right, you just It's as if you have no idea and it's not complicated The Bible tells us very plainly But you, th you set up three false narratives here and saying, well, it must be one or the other or the other, and it's none of them. Giving weight to the first theory is the fact that in the Old Testament, the phrase sons of God always refers to angels. A potential problem with this is in Matthew 22 30, which indicates that angels do not marry. The Bible gives us no reason to believe that angels have a gender or are able to reproduce. The other two views do not present this problem. The weakness of views B and C is that ordinary human males marrying ordinary human females does not account for why the offspring were giants or heroes of old. <laughs> so, tall men having relations with tall women won't bring about tall babies, tall children? That's not true at all. You know, breeding is something that's been going on forever, you know, since the beginning of creation. People have breeded. People have breeded dogs, cats, all kinds of animals. Breeding is a natural part of this world. This guy just told a lie. Yeah, that's a problem. And you're not being, just not, not just that he's lying to people, he's lying to himself. That's not true at all. What he's saying is not true at all. Old men of renown. Further, why would God decide to bring the flood on the earth when God had never forbade powerful human males or descendants of Seth to marry ordinary human females or descendants of Cain? 
The oncoming judgment of Genesis 6, 5 through 7 is linked to what took place in Genesis 6, 1 through 4. Only the obscene, perverse marriage of fallen angels with human females would seem to justify such a harsh judgment. As previously noted, the weakness of the first view is that Matthew 22, 30 declares, At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. However, the text does not say angels are not able to marry. Rather, it indicates that angels do not not marry. Alright. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said? You see the the deception here, the evilness and the wickedness. Oh yea, did God say angels? don't marry or yea does it say God the angels can't marry you see the wickedness here this is the same thing that the serpent was doing way back in the beginning it's unbelievable now he, you know he, he meant you saw where he mentioned uh, this idea of Seth and then he he plays on that idea let's go back here all right I'll, godly descendants of Seth marrying wicked descendants of Cain so and then you heard in this video here the guy said I think they're descendants of Seth this is a descendants myth. of Seth wow I got that right Seth this is a myth wait, wait. the Old Testament controversial topic to say the least there's, there's a lot of different theories I believe that the sons of God were the line of Seth this is a now I mean, golly, man. You know, if somebody said, "Well, Christians are stupid," it would be, I would have a hard time arguing against that. Now, if the sons of God are descendants of Seth, wouldn't that make Seth like a god? I mean, it. I can't even begin to try to understand the stupidity of that. I really can't. I cannot fathom where they get that idea from. So, we're going to have to tackle that first. Alright, so let's go to Luke chapter 3. And the gene genealogy is given, and it goes all the way back to Adam. And there's Seth, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So that means they're all sons of God. If they're all sons of Adam, they're all sons of God. It's not complicated. Alright. There's no reason whatsoever to claim that Seth was a son of God, but Adam was not. When the Bible very clearly says Adam was the son of God. Alright, so this is very difficult I know because you know how do I convince you that you've been lied to right it's easier for people to lie to you than it is for me to convince you that you've been lied to let's go to first John chapter 3 well, I don't even have to open it up, do I? Now yeah, I better, just in case. Okay, so 1 John chapter 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Right now, we that are born of God, we are the sons of God. And perhaps 
some of you have heard me say this I am a son of God and believe me I'm no angel okay I mean come on I mean, it's unbelievable really it's this is not rocket science pretty simple stuff man pretty simple stuff so all the Adam including and all of his, the children from him which is all of them are sons of God so all of them before the flood were sons of God all of them now I mean this it's really not that complicated but you know when you've been lied to and you not only been lied to but you desperately want to believe that there are UFO aliens up in the sky having sex with your wife and your daughter or whatever you want to believe I don't know which what your desire is here are they gonna save you they're going to give you extra special powers. You're going to be able to fly around the moon or the sun or whatever. Fly around the earth. Turn back time. <clears throat> I mean, what is it, man? What are these childlike fantasies that you have that you so desperately want to believe? Now, it's important to understand, you know when you go to Abraham and when he was oh goodness sakes when he was told to offer well, Isaac I, I'm sorry I gotta think about when this one okay so I right there okay and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So if you're on if you know the Bible, then you know that Abraham was gonna offer his son as a burnt offering to God for sins. And Abraham had great faith. Right? He had great faith. So let's do it this way. And because he had great faith, the angel stopped him from doing that. And instead uh, promised Abraham and his seed everlasting life, the kingdom of God. And there was when the division was made between sons of God and outside of the sons of God um, or uh, you could say the the sons of the devil the children of the devil there are the children of God and children of the devil okay because there is a promise made to Abraham it was made to Abraham and his seed. Outside of that promise were the children of the devil. So only those of the promise are children of God. The children of God and sons of God, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Man, you can't, you're not being honest. When you say, that the sons of God is different than the children of God. It's just not honest, not with yourself, not with others, and it's complete ignorance and a complete lack of understanding. And uh, it's incredible. So let's go to Genesis 6. And let's examine that with the understanding that all them that lived 
before Noah's flood were sons of God. It's not rocket science, man. <sighs> now, in Genesis 6, verse 1, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. All right, so the, the, so that the sons of God, which points here, okay, so in verse 2, we read here, and it came to pass when men began to multiply, that the sons of God, this is parallel. You could draw a line from this to that. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. So we can draw... A line from this word here in verse 1 to this word in verse 2. Daughters of men. Daughters, daughters of men, same thing. Sons of God, men, same thing. That they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. So <clears throat> here we notice a problem here. And the problem is they weren't taking just one woman to be their wife. They were taking wives, many wives, of all which they chose. So they had several wives, and that's a problem. That's going to create all kinds of problems. And it shows the perverseness of these men. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. You notice here, verse 1, Men, sons of God, man. So the problem is with man. Right? For that he also is flesh. You see that? Men, sons of God, man flesh for his day shall be in 120 years it's pretty consistent right pretty consistent these first three verses there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that and also after that maybe I better highlight that too huh and also after that there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. That's important to remember. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. All right, so we read about this up here. right? Men, sons of God, man, flesh, sons of God. And then we got daughters, daughters of men, and daughters of men. Right? Oh, and I forgot the wives. I'm sorry. Daughters, daughters of men. Wives, daughters of men. And, okay, so somebody asked me a while back, uh, you know, why is it called daughters of men? Well, it's because the woman or the daughter belongs to her dad until her dad gives her in marriage. All right, so we we see Jesus use this reference uh, many times. In the days of Noah, they shall be marrying and being given in marriage. So, when a man will marry a a woman, and then a man will give his daughter to another man in marriage. All right, that's all that means. Where are we at? That's all that means. So the daughters belong to the men until the man gives his daughter to another man. All right, and they bear children, and that should be a clue too, right? That when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, oops, that they bear children, that should be a clue. If you ain't figured it out by now, to them, and they bear children to them 
can't forget them. The same became mighty men. Notice that. Mighty men. All right, so we'll go back up here. We've got men, sons of God, man, flesh, sons of God, mighty men. Notice consistency here. It doesn't, there's no ambiguity or whatever that word is. There's no mis mystery about it. Let's talk about men, which were of old men of renown. <clears throat> All right. It's unbelievable how clear this is. It's talking about man. Do you still have doubts? Do you still doubt that this is talking about men? Well, if you have doubts, then that's because you desperately, desperately want to believe that there are little green men flying around in outer space, coming down at night and having sex with your wife while you're sleeping. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of, man. Well, why else would you think that? Because you want to believe the movies that you're watching on TV? Explain that a little bit. Why are you so desperate to believe something that is so contrary to the Word of God? And God saw the wickedness of man. Man. And God, what, God saw what? The wickedness of man. Men. <clears throat> excuse me. Men, sons of God. Man, flesh. Sons of God. Mighty men, men of renown, wickedness of man. God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So now we're starting to identify the problem. Right? And the problem is imagination was only evil continually the imagination of his heart was only evil continually in Jeremiah we read the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So we're identifying a problem. All right, so God, it's, it's God is identifying a problem, a big problem. Right, we're seeing the problem that God is identifying, and that is the heart of man. The heart of man is only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. So, so, so far we got men, sons of God, Man, flesh, sons of God, mighty men, men of renown, wickedness of man, and I repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. So are you still having doubts about what this is talking about? You still think this is talking about UFO aliens? Huh? You're desperately clinging to something that's not being spoken of here in Genesis 6. It's not there. And so it begs the question, do you believe God? You believe the Word of God. Do you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? And that's, re that's really, really important. Really, really important because if you think about even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. So when you're reading Genesis 6, for example, you think about this. 
Who wrote Genesis 6? Was it Adam? No. It was, it was from Moses. It was from God. God given to Moses. But when it talks about here, when Moses is read, now keep in mind there is no book of Moses. All right, I got a list right here. I can, I can prove it. I'll show you the list. All right, I'm going to show you the list right here. No, no book of Moses, not in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. Just in case you're, wait a second. I thought there was. No, nope, no book of Moses. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart all right you can if it's very fair to apply Genesis 6 to what is being written here even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart why because they do not believe they don't believe and without without faith you're gonna have the veil upon their heart. Okay, let's let's see if I can find something here. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. So Second Corinthians Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So, when a person has faith in God, then the veil is taken away. Alright, so begs the question, do you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? Remember, man cannot live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live so begs the question what where is the Word of God and you have the Word of God right here in the King James Bible if you don't believe this is the Word of God then do you believe any Bible in any language anywhere on the earth at any time in human history be honest with yourself I don't care you know what you say really just be honest with what you believe if you say no I don't believe in any Bible then you're saying you don't believe God and by your own words you're in trouble because the Word of God says man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live that's important man that's important let's see if I can find that verse here <clears throat> this is what the in Deuteronomy it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God here in Deuteronomy this is not again this is not a new thing this has been going on and on and on all right. Man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Now if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, then you're lacking faith. And because you're lacking faith, you're going to lack understanding. It's a roadblock that you've put in front of yourself and you're preventing yourself from understanding and why? You, because you want to believe in Superman? You just want to ignore what God says? So that's what people do, isn't it? Real quickly, let's go to Hebrews 11. Let's see. Does it talk about faith? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. You putting your faith in Superman and Boogeyman or whatever, you know, I don't know. And look, look at this, man. This is incredible, right? Faith. But when you don't have faith, the veil is upon your 
heart. Do you believe these words right here? Okay, and that's a big deal because if you believe these are directly from God, and you should believe these are directly from God, they're not from man. You know, God gave Moses his word directly. You go to Exodus 31, and he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. God gave Moses the word of God directly, so also today God gives us his word directly. It's not from man. If you believe it's from man, then you're putting your trust in man and not in God. And there's you know, all sorts of evidences all throughout the Bible that we can trust the Word of God. Second Peter 1, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Word of God comes from God directly. And so the key is faith. Believing that the words that you are reading are directly from God. Because they are. You believe that God can raise you from the dead, but God can't give you His word in your own language? Acts chapter 2 How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born you believe Acts chapter 2 in the cloven tongues but you don't believe that God can speak English you know, what kind of God do you worship or do you believe that you're God First Corinthians 14 in the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people and yet for all that will they not hear me saith the Lord With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me. So you want to say that you can't you can't read this in English, you gotta go back to the original. Well, the big problem here, if you say you gotta go back to the original, um <laughs> the big problem, because you don't know the original there is no original even if there was an original you wouldn't be able to understand it yeah, I wouldn't I guarantee you I would not be able to understand I barely understand English you tell me now I gotta learn Greek and Hebrew come on man those are not the original languages <laughs> those are dead languages yeah, I pointed this out and it's, it's important to understand it really is um, it's it should be so obvious but you know people want to believe what other men say God says and not realizing apparently that they actually have thy the direct words of God in their hands in the King James Bible it's right there in your hands that's from God why would you believe anything outside of that Bible because this whole world is full of liars and deceivers right? so the old ancient Hebrew the Koine Greek that's all done away with and it doesn't matter anyway God the Word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever and you think about whether you wanna 
you know, you talk about English, you want to talk about Hebrew, you want to talk about Greek, you want to talk about Chinese, doesn't matter. It's all going away. It's all going away. On the day of the Lord, when we are transformed into our glorified body, we will be given a new language, a pure language. So all the languages in the world today, it's all going to be done away with. Right, so it's really important that you have faith in God. And God has given us His Word in our own language. Now think about this. What kind of God do you worship that can't speak the language that you speak? It's a weird God. There's something wrong with your God. If he can't speak to you in English. If He can't give you a book with the words in your of your language there's something wrong with your God my God is able to speak all languages for all time forever and ever alright so we see here in Genesis 6 that it repented the Lord that he had made man you notice here there's no mention of your foes no mention of aliens no mention of Batman no mention of Superman. No mention of Spider-Man. No mention of Boogeyman. I don't know if that's a superhero, but... It's always talking about man. Men, sons of God, are men. Sons of God are men. Mighty men. Men of renown. Man. Man. If... Look, if you're gonna say that here oh, I forgot one verse before we get into that let's get into verse 7 and the Lord said I will destroy man man and I will destroy man from whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and creeping thing in the fowls of the air for it repents me that I have made them now let's go back and try to understand this in the eyes of the deceiver that says this is talking about angels All right. It's kind of weird because the word angel is not mentioned at all. All right, so let's let's try to imagine. All right, try to imagine that God doesn't really know how to communicate with us, and that sons of God actually means angels. All right, and it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth that the sons of I'm sorry, let me try that again. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth that the angels saw daughters of men, and they took them all, uh, wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Well, wait a second. What man do? Well, what what in the world what in the heck it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and the angels saw the daughters of men they took them wives of all which they choose chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man well, why what's the problem with man it was the angels that what did it don't make any sense it don't make any sense at all and it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth that the angels took the daughters of men all which they chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man well, what in the world what happened here <laughs> and there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that all right, so you think about well what happens is that God saw these angels having sex with all these women 
And God said, I'm going to destroy this world because of what the angels are doing. Because what they're doing is they're having sex with the women. And when they have sex with the women, they, the women have these great big babies. We call them giants. Some people call them Nephilims. So, uh, God's going to destroy the world because of these angels having sex with women. You see, it's all about sex. Alright, so, God destroys the world because he wants to just destroy all this angel sex that's going on. And, but, it doesn't work. I mean, God just, he, he just can't, it's a big struggle, big fight against these, these angels. Because the angels are having sex with women. God can't stop them. So he's gonna, he's gonna destroy man because of what the angels did. Doesn't make any sense. I can't even. All right. So God saw that the wickedness of man. Well, what about the wickedness of the angels? Are they angels or are they men? All right, so now you want to say, well, they're half man, half angels. So it reminds me of the Seinfeld episode, half pig, half man. Same thing, really. That's there's no mention of here of of half man, half angels. There's no mention of angels at all. The Lord said, I will destroy man from whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing. But what about the angels? They're the ones that are causing all the troubles, according to the deceiver. You notice that? Yeah, not only is there no mention of angels there, but it specifically says God will destroy man. And it repented the Lord that he had made man. Well, why, why didn't I repent the Lord that he made angels? Yeah, you ever thought about that? Why, if the, it's because, of, if God destroyed the world because of angels, don't you think God would be a little bit disappointed that he'd made angels? Well, I think a lot of people should answer this question, what are angels? Well, what's the Bible say? <laughs> uh, the Bible specifically, directly, very plainly says angels are spirits who makes his angels spirits. They're spirits, they're not flesh and blood. Let's go to oh, I gotta think about the verse here in John. No. Okay, hold on a second. I'm gonna it's gonna come to me. It's gonna you know, it's gonna come to me. Hold on a second. It's gonna come to me. I don't know how, but it's gonna come to me. Oh boy! All right. So hold on a second. Just gotta be patient with me. That's all. Oh, it's in Luke. I was way off, man. Doggone it. All right, so Jesus says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is myself, that it is I, myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit has not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. See, Jesus is not an angel. Now, 
so if you understand the context of Luke 24 um, oh, where are we at here? right here maybe I ought to highlight this All right, let me highlight this here now the context is that this is after Jesus has resurrected okay the Lord is risen saying the Lord is risen and he appeared to Simon all right and then so on and so forth peace be unto you and he ultimately says behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit has not flesh and bones as ye see me have angels do not have flesh and bones all right so you're probably wondering well what about uh, you know entertain angels unawares be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares yeah that that can't contradict the Bible you understand that right you can't have a contradiction in the Bible so there's only one way to understand this and that is the angels are spirits and when you're entertaining strangers you may very well be entertaining spirits of God you think of the Spirit of God is in you the Spirit of God dwells in you well when you come across the stranger that stranger may very well have the spirits of God in them as well right so you don't know if you're entertaining a child of God or child of the devil right the spirits of that person you don't know so again this goes back to the golden rule if you will whatsoever you would that you would have men do unto you do ye also unto them right or treat others the way that you'd want to be treated however you want to word it love thy neighbor as thyself right so be not forgetful that when you're well, out and about if you will and you come across somebody you've never met before that um, you may be entertaining the angels of God within that person the angels might be watching over that person and therefore you have an opportunity to also help that person and there's really no other way to look at this to say well this is you might be entertaining little green men from Mars that's not right is that what you think I mean, just be honest man you think this is well you might be entertaining UFOs UFO aliens is that what you believe you think that's what this is saying you think the Word of God says some have entertained UFO aliens unaware I didn't realize that was a green little man he had antennas on his head I was kind of suspicious of that but no no that's not what this is talking about at all behold remember here Jesus is saying behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit has not flesh and bones as ye see me have he's saying touch me handle me feel my hands and my feet feel this here is not talking about touching strangers 
It's talking about be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. That just simply means to bring them joy and to be, you know, courteous and helpful and all that sort of stuff. Here, specifically in Luke 24, Jesus is saying, I am not just a spirit. He's saying this is real, fellas. This is real. So he has resurrected into a real being. And so also will we resurrect into a real being. For a spirit has not flesh and bones. And he makes his angels spirits. Right? So angels are not beings. There is no procreation among angels. They are not humanoids or whatever UFO aliens. I, I don't know. I don't know a better word than that. I really don't. Angels are not beings at all. They are spirits. And there's a difference between a being and a spirit. And I, you know, I think you you've read too many comic books. If you sincerely believe that angels are UFO aliens, there's something wrong with your heart, in my opinion. And aside from just being ignorant, there's something wrong with your heart if you believe angels are beings. Because right, you're desperately wanting to believe something that is never mentioned in the Bible. And something you own, an idea you only get from watching Hollywood movies. Or watching, you know, I guess, you watch the network news. I guess they talk about that a lot too. But angels are not beings at all. Alright. And so, uh, I should probably mention the angels that were with Lot and well let me just I'll just briefly go over it so there were a couple of angels with Lot and Lot he offered a bunch of perverts wanted to have sex with these angels and Lot offered his daughters instead but uh, what's important to understand here is that it wasn't the angels that wanted to have sex with the perverts it was the perverts that wanted to have sex with the angels and the angels uh, very well uh, could have been men and the angels of God were in those within those men however you want to look at it that's fine where we have a problem is when you think those men had antennas on their head and they came from the planet Mars All right, that's where you're going outside of common sense and into the world of science fiction okay now um, so I'll finish it on this. Okay, so people want to say that these angels are sons of God. Alright? So the issue is, there are the, the, what I take a, a extreme exception to is the idea that they're not just saying that sons of God are angels. They're saying sons of God are fallen angels demons I'm a son of God so you're basically saying that I'm a fallen angel and then I'm a demon it doesn't make any sense all right so you're ignoring common sense and logic and you're desperately wanting to believe there are green little men up there to the extent that you're willing to say 
sons of God are fallen angels and they are demons. And uh, you might as well be saying that about Jesus. And what do we got here in Jude chapter 1? <laughs> right before chapter 2. Two chapters before Jude chapter 3. It says, How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. You see what's going on here? These mockers are saying that the sons of God are angels having sex with daughters. It's all about the sex and God destroys the world because these angels were having sex with women. They're having sex with my daughter and my wife. It was all, it's all about sex. So God destroyed the world because they're all they're just sex. These demons were having sex with daughters. These fallen angels were having sex with daughters. It was all about sex. These guys were having sex with daughters. They were evil, wicked, horrible angels, fallen angels, demons, devils, UFO. Well, I don't want they say, but I mean that's. But what's it say here? Sons of God. You want to say sons of God are fallen angels, are demons? And then it's unbelievable. You know, let's go to First John here. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Oops. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not, because it knew him not. And Jesus gives us the power to become sons of God. In John chapter 1, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We are sons of God. We that are born of God are sons of God. That's why you've heard me say, I'm a son of God, and believe me, I'm no angel. So these guys, they're making this out to be all about sex. They've watched too much Cinemax. In Second Peter chapter 2, knowing this first, that there should come in the last days, scoffers, walking after their own lust so again what do they say that these guys are having sex you know walking after their own lust then they're making the Bible out to be um, a science fiction book aren't they because right, they're looking at this and saying UFO aliens had sex with women and created these hybrids and God destroyed the world because of these hybrids because what the angels are having sex these hybrids and but you know we'll, we'll just have to ignore the fact that they repented the Lord that he made man and that there's no mention at all of UFO aliens or you know, angels or fallen angels or demons or hybrids or none of that. No mention at all of any of that. These guys are making a mockery and they are scoffing at those of us that are born of God. Those of us that believe God. And they're taking what is written in the Bible in applying their own lust and you know you've also heard people talk about the serpent seed the serpent seed doctrine 
where they say Cain was a child conceived when the serpent had sex with Eve again sex they're applying their own lust that is in their heart they're applying their own filthiness to what they see in the world or to what they read in the Bible they're applying their own filthiness to what they see and read in the Bible yet the Bible's very clear Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said I have gotten a man from the Lord now a person with a sick and wicked and lustful heart is gonna read that same thing and imagine this is the serpent having sex with Eve and bearing Cain that's what happens when people are driven by lust and there's lots of examples of this but um, you know this again is another example of how we are inching closer to the end of the world and there's so much deception out there it just makes me wonder man you know if Jesus said hey I'm coming today I, I couldn't argue against him and I certainly wouldn't try to prevent him either 2 Timothy 3 but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived and it's, it's not getting better folks it's getting worse All right. and so what are we seeing I mean this idea of UFO aliens is dominating it seems like it's dominating the news it's dominating television and when I see you know this stuff on my channel I mean come on man why are you guys falling for this it's not in the Bible it makes me wonder you know I, I said this years ago I, you know, I think maybe they might try to fake a, U, uh, a UFO encounter you know a UFO alien encounter they could fake it and they could I just don't believe that they could get away with it well I'm kinda I'm starting I'm starting to wonder if maybe maybe they can fake it maybe they can get away with it of course not everybody's gonna buy it understandably but it seems like they're really trying to get people on board with this idea that there are UFO aliens flying around up in the sky I mean they're he it seems like it's heavier now than ever before and it's amazing to me because there's been zero evidence of any UFO alien period uh, zero evidence and you would think in this day it's like there's more evidence for Bigfoot than there are for UFO aliens there's absolutely zero evidence for either one but it's being pushed and pushed and pushed and it's, it's on Fox News it's on CNN it's on my channel it's making me sick because what can I say I can't convince people that they've been lied to and I just wonder why why are you all so desperate to believe that there are green little men up in the sky?